I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother? Her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425. Step up to craft beer. Dino Light Lager has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean style flavor. Boricua beer craft ale, full body flavor for the true beer drinker. Stop drinking beer water. Dino Craft Light Lager and Boricua Strong Craft Ale. Feel the rhythm. Step up to craft. Tap rooms are localized and they're geographic. The Hispanic community is much broader than one tap room. So what we decided to do was come out with a high quality craft beer, two high quality craft beers that appeal to the Hispanic taste and that we can distribute in all the Hispanic neighborhoods. Taino is a very light, refreshing beer. It's a, it's a social beer that you can drink probably for a good part of the evening and it will give you a nice light feeling. It's not a heavy beer, it's very airy and it's very light. It's a 4.5 alcohol, which is low for beer. The Boricua is a 6.0. Now that's a stronger beer and we designed it to be a little bit stronger than Heineken. Heineken is a favorite in the Hispanic community, so we have a little bit more muscle than Heineken. Boricua, Boricua right now, in a very short amount of time, it's been a miracle for us because we've gotten a, a large range of acceptance at the retail level. We're in Publix, we're in ABC, Target is picking it up, we're in Sedano's, we're in Bravo's, 7-Elevens are picking it up because they're concentrating more on craft beer and the Hispanic market. So what we try to do is do a quality beer, a high quality beer, more taste, and that the Hispanic community will like. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother? Her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll free 866 3411425 Hi, I'm Danny Ramos and welcome to Latina Role Models. I am sitting in for um, I'm a guest host today uh, for Margie Vieras who is not here with us and uh, our guest tonight is Norma Almovodar Robinson, did I say that right? Almodovar. 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 <laughs> and you're, you're, you're a New Yorican. I am. Okay. So in case anybody out there doesn't know what a New Yorican is, it's someone of Puerto Rican heritage that their parents were born in Puerto Rico, and then they were born in New York. Mm -hmm. So there's another word for Chicago, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right. So you, you came to Central Florida in what year? In 1998. Okay. So... There was a, there's been a mass migration into Central Florida. What brought you in 1998? I came in 1997. What was the motivation for you to leave New York to uh, uplift and come here? Was it a job opportunity? What was it? It actually wasn't a job opportunity. Um, my sister lived in Orlando, Florida um, for over 10 years at that time. And I was coming to visit and um, I was on vacation and we were talking about life. I had recently gotten a divorce, a uh, single parent with mm -hmm. a four-year-old son at the time, who today is 23. Um, and we were just talking about life and I was very frustrated and just wanted to try something new. And she said, well, why don't you go ahead and look for a job? At the time, there was a newspaper. Right. So I looked in the paper and here I found this job and I called. And Where did you start? I started at Dal America Marketing. Okay. Um, it's a call center. I so, know. <laughs> Dal yeah, America, yeah. yeah. So I started there in 1998. Um, again, circled it on the newspaper, called, got an interview. They called me back for a second interview and I got hired. I said, I can't move. I, I wasn't even planning to move. So I got to, you know, give me some time. So they gave me a month. And I've been here since. Hmm. It takes. It took you a month to move. It took me uh, just a month. Wow. Just wow. a month. That's just. No, I moved well, in three days. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to Mine go was, back to yeah. my employer. You yeah. know. Well, I was self-employed at the time, but yeah. my, my move was quick. So when you came down here, um, obviously you're bilingual, Hispanic, and when you get down, when you came down here, how did you find the reception to who you were 
as a Hispanic in 1998? Um, it actually really well. I felt very comfortable coming from New York, which is a melting pot, right? And then coming to Florida, I think everybody here is from New York, and there's so many people. Mm -hmm. There's very few people who are actually from Florida. Um, I felt very comfortable. I felt like home. Uh, you know, I have friends who've moved here and moved right back to New York because they didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. I was instantly attracted to Florida, mm -hmm. um, especially working for a company like Dial America, where mm -hmm. it was a very um, diverse mm -hmm. um, community within. So, and I, and so I just, I, it was just comfort immediately. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing now? What 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 career path are you on now? So I work for Full Sail University. Okay. Um, I am an inbound student support manager. So basically, I I work for the outsource company, which is um, the Office Gurus. Um, well, I work for Full Sail, but I manage the Office Gurus, and they're in Belize, El Salvador, and, and what Tampa. And what does that do? Um, it's basically their call centers in mm -hmm. these in these locations, and they um, if we have a student who shows interest in our website um, for Full Sail University, we one of those centers calls them within 30 seconds and says, "Hey." Well, it shows interest like if they're if, outside the country. If they know interest in overall, it doesn't matter if they're outside of the country, they're in the United States. Okay. They just go to our website and say, "I want to learn more about this specific degree." Mm -hmm. And one of my centers mm -hmm. um, that are located in, in those three locations calls them within 30 seconds and, mm -hmm. you know, introduces them to Full Sail and says, let me connect you to an admissions representative and connect them over. Wow. So, you know, it's just a really quick way to connect to people who are highly interested in our university. Okay. And what, what extra, uh, what other activities are you involved in that your profession has brought you into in Central Florida? I know, it's, it's, I know most people here do a lot of networking. They mm -hmm. do a lot of contacting. What other involvements do you have? Well, I would say um, a lot of my involvement is within my un the university that I work for, for Full Sail University. I, um, I'm honored to say that Full Sail really focuses on empowering women in the workplace. So they have a woman's initiative, kind of helps you with self-confidence, self-awareness, kind of empowering you to be better, to be your best self in, um, in the leadership world. So I'm part of that um, within the community, you know, within Full Sail. I'm also part of the Women's Book Club. Mm -hmm. So again, we read books and we kind of talk about, again, empowering women. What are genetics? Why are we different? Why are men in the corporate ladder moving at a higher level than women? There is a difference. Why? And why do you think? Well, well first I'm, of I'm all, saying why do you think? That's a personal, yeah. a personal opinion, but also it could be a professional opinion. I mean, there's... there's well, I think we do it to ourselves. I mean, I think as a woman, as a mother, right, we have to think things very thoroughly. We have to really say, okay, you know, if we're in a park and our kid is playing on a swing, we're thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to fall and get hurt. Um, where a man, not necessarily from my experience, thinks like that. So it kind of affects us in our career because we go into an interview and we apply for a job that we are 100 percent feel, you know, we're thinking ahead, I got this, I can do this, where I think a man, he tends to say, I don't know it, but I'll learn it. And I'll, so mm -hmm. we as women need to build on that and be more confident and say, we can do this. We can, and we can do a great job at it, but we tend to hold back until we're 100 percent there. And why is that? Is um, that, is that come from historical restriction in society? Or does that come from the personal experience of a person in their existing life or both? Yeah, I think it's both. I think it has to do with your upbringing. Um, you know, for me uh, personally, my upbringing in my household, my mom, you know, worked full time. Uh, my father did as well. And, you know, she just, you know, she pretty much wore the pants in the family. Um, so it kind of, you know, learning, okay. <laughs> This what, is okay, <laughs> what is where the pants of the family? Well, I'm just saying I she can't, was. I can't miss. <laughs> I can't miss that one. Go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, like she was a big deciding factor. She made. She pretty much controlled the household. She worked. She managed the meals. She, you know, managed the bills, and you know, took care of the kids. And you know what she said and did it. Pretty much, my father went along so with it. Was was that your role model? What? Who was your role model? My mother. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, and my son. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I know he's. It's he's not older than me, but my son has definitely always. Well, me. Yeah, obviously. Um, he's definitely always inspired me. 
um, to be better mm -hmm. um, because I had him so young. You know, I mm -hmm. had him at 18 years old, so I definitely Have you been working all the time? All the time. I had, when I first moved so, here to Florida. Well, be before that, were you working? Oh, yeah. When you were over there, you were working Yeah, I also. worked for another company called ETC, another call center. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been working since, mm -hmm. since before he was born. Okay. And what, in, what, when you say he's your role model, what has he given you in the form of instilling in you uh, a, a betterment? He's given me belief. He's given me confidence. He's given me well, will. That's, that's a big, big, big contribution. Yeah, he definitely really has. Um, I had a choice. You yeah. know, I had a choice to either say I'm 18 and I'm just going to act like an 18 year old or I'm going to put, you know, my mom hat on mm -hmm. and be, you know, so a strong. So, how old woman. were you when you had children? Well, my son, 18. Okay, so you so. started when 18. Did you stay at home or did you work or at yeah, that time? Yeah, I, well, I worked. Yeah, okay. I worked the entire time. And when, like I said, when I moved here in Florida, he was four. Um, and I started at Dollar America. I picked up a second job. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a family of working hard, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it was, I wanted to have the good things. But at the same time, I knew that the salary I was making at that time wasn't going to cut it. So mm -hmm. I picked up a second job, waitressing job, to okay. kind of make ends meet. Yeah, and what? Let me ask you something about your politics. Are you involved in politics, or do you have a perception of politics at all? Do you want to um, talk about that, or do you rather shelve it? I rather shelve it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an opinion. Well, I do definitely have an opinion, but that's why I asked you not, because you seem um, like a person that would have an, a strong I, opinion. I do have a strong opinion, um, but I'll hold my my comments. You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so where where do you intend to go from here? In other words, you, you, you know, you've you've established a new life over the past years. You have uh, two wonderful children that um, give you motivation. Mm -hmm. um, where do you aspire to go? You're a young woman. Where do you aspire to go with your career and your life? You know, um, I'm really, really happy where I'm at um, mm -hmm. with my with you know the company that I work for. Of course, I, I want to move up in that company, um, but really right How now. How long have you been there? Nine years. Oh, that's that. You're there. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you're there. there. I you know I think I'm. I, yeah, I have no. I, it's a wonderful place, and I'm not just saying that the culture is great. Again, they put it, invest mm -hmm. in women, not only you know in their people um, and the students, which are ex extremely important, but women itself. And to me, that's that's big, um, mm -hmm. especially in the world that we live in. So um, I'm currently taking my master's at Full Sail University mm -hmm. now with uh, business intelligence. So right now I'm just focused on learning a new skill set. Okay. I'm just focused. And where are you going to take the uh, business intelligence? I was talking to you before, mm -hmm. but you explained it to me, but explain it to the audience. So um, business intelligence, basically, it's all data driven. So data visualization, um, data history. Um, so basically, I take an, I can take data and tell you what's going to happen next. I can tell you what what algorithms that we're mm -hmm. seeing, what what are the things that are going to happen within your industry, within the world, mm -hmm. within crime rate. There's just Good, so I many things. I got to talk to you about my beer company. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's um, it's a skill set that I didn't have. Um, I felt like I'm pretty well rounded. Mm -hmm. And it was one thing that I was missing. I, like I said, I manage call centers, you know, out of the country, and because I work for Full Send, I manage. I have to look at reporting, and I have to look at reporting in a different aspect. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at it and going, okay, how did they do this? Sure, they could provide it to me, but how did they make this? And how did they come up with these numbers? So really looking at it in a direction that is deeper than what I'm accustomed to or what my skills were. So I said, well. I'm just going to do my master's in business intelligence. Full Sail University offers it. I'm going to sign up, and I'm probably the one student who has no passion for it, but is learning. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you see use for it within within Full Sail? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Especially so it's going to give current. you another asset Ab that you can market about yourself. And not just about Full Sail, but in life, everything yeah. is data driven. Everything I go to a doctor's appointment, it's data. It's just everything is data driven, and now I see things in a different perspective. Well, listen, well, that was a quick, you talk very well, and we ran out of time, so you <laughs> ate up my, what, 12, 14 minutes. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. it's gone. You didn't, you thought it was going to last yeah, a lot longer. Yeah, I was longer. like, oh, wow. Well, this is uh, Danny Ramos, and we're going to take a break now from Latina Role Models. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday night. And Norma, I thank you very much for coming, and I wish you all the luck in the world with you, you and your children. It it's was my pleasure. pleasure. It's a pleasure thank coming you. on. Okay? Yes, thanks. Stop up to crap.
beer. Taino Light Lager has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean style flavor. Boricua Beer Craft Ale, full body flavor for the true beer drinker. Stop drinking beer water. Taino Craft Light Lager and Boricua Strong Craft Ale. Feel the rhythm. Step up to craft. For the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her, and her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll free 866-341-1425. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care because her father abused her. And her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll free 866-341-1425. Good evening, welcome to Latina Role Models. Today we have with us Gisela Laurent. She is the first Hispanic female county judge in Orange County, um, so welcome. So I'm excited to have you here today. I wanted the public to know a little bit more about you. I wanted to know things such as why did you become a judge? How did you get here? How to empower our young Latinas? So can you tell us a little bit more about your, your journey? Thank you so much, Monivet, for having me on this show. I'm really excited to be here too. You know, my, um, my journey is a long journey. I don't know, I, I've always known I wanted to be a judge. And I think it's because I always wanted to be a community leader and I always saw the judge as an important part of the community. Um, so it's been an amazing, amazing journey. Uh, when I sought out to start becoming a judge in 2015, I wanted to run for 2016 election, which would have had me start in 2017. You know, it took a village. I had to, you know, get my family to commit to the investment of time because I was going to be away from the house for a long time and my daughters had to understand so it was a family decision about when I was going to start campaigning and then you know it was an investment of money because it takes a lot of resources to run an effective campaign it was an you know a commitment from friends and families who worked on my committee to help me spread the word and get it out there but I I really thought and I still you know feel that it's very important to have the judiciary the bench look like the community and when I wanted to be the first female Hispanic county court judge, I knew that our bench at the time did not look like a community because, you know, our community is 30% Hispanic and our bench had like probably two Hispanic judges um, for a long time and then we had our first female Hispanic circuit court judge in 2012, which is Leticia Marquez. She was the first female circuit court. And so I, I'm, I'm honored to serve as um, a Latina Judiciary. And a little bit of background, you also came from the Public Defender's Office, correct? correct? Yes. And um, I was a public defender as well at one point, and what you said is very important because the client and the community base, there was a lot of Spanish-speaking people, and it was hard to see so many attorneys that could not understand their own clients. Um, I, and I, asking and waiting for a translator. How is that? Has it gotten a little bit better? Uh, you being on the bench looking from the bench now? Well, definitely. I think that, you know, that is still an issue. You know, we have a, we have a high volume of non-English speaking Latinos that come to the courthouse. And if they're represented by the public defender's office, you know, the public defender has an interpreter in their office. So they're great about having resources for their clients but they don't have the interpreter available for every attorney who doesn't speak English um, in the courtroom. And we have in the courthouse, we have a great team of interpreters, but they're in high demand as well. So they're running from courtroom to courtroom. And so I think that, that I, as a Latina or Hispanic speaking, Spanish speaking judge, I give the community that doesn't speak English, the, the Hispanic community, because that's the only other language I speak, that comfort, that ease, because I can tell them, you know, un momento, I'll, and I'll be right with you, just have a Well, seat. that's important that you said that, because being on the public defense side, it was hard 
when, as an attorney when they brought in a translator and sometimes the translators don't translate correct mm -hmm. but the judges doesn't don't know what anyone is saying exactly so it is very important that you're in our judiciary because you know the language so you would know if somebody is saying the incorrect thing yes has that happened at all yeah it happens you know and it also maybe not so much that there's sometimes they do say things incorrect because everybody's human mm -hmm. and so it's good to be able to catch that but also sometimes the Spanish language is so rich that you have so many different dialects you know that I may think that the interpreter is saying something wrong because that's not the language that I would use my family's from the Dominican Republic but they would say it differently in Spain or in Puerto Rico or in Cuba or in Santo Domingo so the interpreters use the more common not the you know one specific to the region so sometimes for I'll give you an example um, like the word probation mm -hmm. you know they don't say probatoria even though that's what we normally understand it to yes. be mm -hmm. so the common person you know who's a defendant who maybe doesn't have a college education you know they're coming there thinking probation is probatoria so if you say something else mm -hmm. they're like what what yeah. <laughs> and, and you know and I already know this and so I'm I allow the I look at the probation officer and sometimes I'll say probatoria because I can say that but they mm -hmm. can't say that the translator can't say exactly. that exactly um, to me it's it's frustrating as an attorney um, in the criminal court and, and in the family law court when people that don't speak the Spanish language perhaps say in a court proceeding oh they're faking it they know they know English they're just not they, they just decided to not know English today but as a Spanish-speaking person, I'm sorry, as a Spanish-speaking person, I understand that sometimes you get nervous. It's hard enough when you speak the language. Exactly. So um, it's pretty, that's what I'm saying. It's amazing that you're on the bench because you can catch these things, which would help justice, I would think. And I think that's an important perception that you picked up on because the reality is, is that this is an important proceeding. Mm -hmm. You don't get to do a retake or redo, anything like that. So having the interpreter is an ex- if they know a little bit of Spanish, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I used to have a really good friend that said, used to tell me all the time, you know, don't make me use all my Spanish in one day or all my English in one day, <laughs> you know, because they only have a little <laughs> bit to use. And um, if they only know a little bit, you want to have an interpreter there, you know. And I, and I see it all the time, you know, we'll have the interpreter, and I can see that the interpreter translator will be um, frustrated because I'll ask the question in English because I have to speak in English because I have to preserve yes. the record. Mm -hmm. And and they will answer the question before the interpretation comes in. And there's that That layer. happens to me as well as that, an attorney. That, that, um, that frustration, I see it. But I understand the fact that they want it there. It's like their comfort. Because they, if, for example, they, there's a word that they don't understand, then they can say, what did she say? Exactly. So. But I want to get back to you because you mentioned um, something that you had to have your whole family uh, behind you. I want to talk about um, the challenges of you running for judge. Were there people against you? Did you feel that people were for you? And also, how old are your daughters? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start out with the easier question. The, I have four beautiful daughters. One's 18 years old. She's going to University of Florida yes. this year. Very, very proud. And I have a 17-year-old. She's currently a junior, finishing her junior year, and so she'll be a senior next year. And then I have a six-year-old baby and a three-year-old baby. So when you talk about, you know, it being a huge yeah, commitment. Yeah, you had little ones. Yes. And you had your own practice. And I had my own firm. So, um, you know, you want to spend as much time with your kids. And I think that the best thing about when I won the election was that I got to spend time with my kids again because you really don't have that time. My husband had to be a full-time daddy daycare. I was campaigning because my day started off at five o'clock in the morning I had since I had my own law firm I had mm -hmm. to wake up early go to my firm answer emails whatever I needed to do administration of my firm so that at seven o'clock in the morning I could go out and network with somebody have breakfast with them and talk about you know why I'm running for judge and and then I'd go back to the you know maybe to court I'd have a mm -hmm. hearing and then I'd get out of court and go to lunch with somebody else to again talk about you know why I'm running for judge and and then I go to the office and return phone calls and answer emails and draft motions and then I'd go out again like by three o'clock so to go networking I again. know how hard it was and I saw you in town and all I kept thinking was um, 
I am so proud of her. Oh, thank you. And when I went to your roving, I, I, you know that I was uh, extremely proud of you. Um, but have there been other challenges that you found when you were running? Did, did some people try to discourage you because you were a woman or you were Latina or anything like that? No, I think this, the community was so supportive. You know, um, you know, you have your day, your bad days, obviously, because you think, you look at a map of Orange County and you see how big it is, and you're trying to figure out how you can touch every person in Orange County, and it's overwhelming. So you have those kind of tough days where, like, how am I going to reach all the voters? How am I going to let them know that I'm the best candidate for the race? Because, you know, there were, at one point I had opposition, and, you know, at that point it's going to be who's going to work the hardest, who's going to reach the most people, you know, who is the public going to remember the most? So it's a lot of work. So that, that piece, I think, was um, mentally overwhelming, but because I had a strong support system, everybody was always encouraging me. You know, they were like, you're everywhere. You know, and then it was great to see people who I didn't even know who had seen something from my campaign, and they tell me, you're everywhere. Then you feel like you're on track. Like, okay, this is, this is the momentum that I need. We're doing all the right things. And, you know, you have to be a cheerleader, too, for your team, because I had a committee, and so I was constantly, you know, I didn't have time to be I down. <laughs> I had to, you know, know, you were on the committee, and, and I'm constantly encouraging them and motivating them, like, we got this, we're close, we're getting closer, we can do this. And it was a team effort, so it was a great experience. And even with education, with your with family, going to law school um, and going to college, how, how was that? Did other members in your family uh, go to college or law school? Oh, no. You know, I was one of the first to, to go to college in my family and go away to college, definitely. You know, I was the first. And, um, but I, I love that. I love setting an example and a tone. I've, then I've, after that, I've seen more of my cousins you know, go away to college, and I think that, it, that it's a great experience, but definitely I think that I worked, my mom always told me I had to be a good example for my daughters, mm -hmm. for my sisters, and I took that to heart, and you know, I want to be a good example for everyone. I want people to know, you know, especially female Hispanics from mm -hmm. wherever you come from, even if your parents didn't go to school, because my parents didn't have a high school diploma. You know, no matter what circumstance you're in, you know, you could go as far as you want to go. You know, you just have to have the motivation, the drive to get through there. But there's going to be support. You're going to make friends, and you have to work hard to get what you what want. What is your daughter planning to go to school for? Oh, yeah. she's going to be great. Gianna is accepted at UF for biomedical engineering. Great. So she's not sure yet if she's going to go into, like, making prosthetics or, you know, something with the body, engineering with the body. She, that's what she likes. And we definitely know she has your support system and your family's yes. support system. So if, what, what advice would you give to a young Latina that's watching the show tonight? I think, you know, dream big and then commit to your dreams. You know, it's not, it's not bad to change what your dream is. Your dream can evolve, your dream can change, but always be moving forward. And I think that, you know, even my teenagers, I tell them all the time, you know, you want to be having fun, you want to be cool, you want to be ha hanging out with your friends, that's great, but you have to prioritize. You need to be moving first. And so you're either going to be the leader that moves your friends forward with you, or you're okay. going to have to cut them loose. But they're going to have to move with you because you're moving forward. Thank you, Jaceda. <laughs> thank, thank you for you. joining us in this show. And good evening, everyone, and we will see you next Tuesday. Step up to craft beer. Taino Light Lager has a crisp, refreshing, Caribbean-style flavor. Boricua Craft Ale, full-bodied flavor for the true beer drinker. Stop drinking beer water. Taino Craft Light Lager and Boricua Strong Craft Ale. Feel the rhythm and come up to craft beer. To craft beer. Dino Light Lager has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean style flavor. Boricua Beer Craft Ale, full body flavor for the true beer drinker. Stop drinking beer water. Dino Craft Light Lager and Boricua Strong Craft Ale. Feel the rhythm. Step up to craft.